Welcome to Silent Symptoms, a Black mental health podcast. I am your host, Kataso Fridge, a Florida-based therapist. This podcast focuses on mental health, stigmas, and social injustices that affect the Black community. This podcast was created to bring awareness about mental health and can be used as an educational guide, but this is not to be used as a replacement for seeking help from a therapist. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hi, welcome to Silent Symptoms, a Black mental health podcast. I am going to be talking about generalized anxiety disorder. Do you have anxiety? There are many other types of anxiety, but today I'm going to be focusing on GAD. So black folks do have anxiety. Black folks do have depression. But, you know, a lot of people like to talk about depression, but we don't really dive into anxiety. And I will say when people do talk about anxiety is overused and sometimes a little washed up. So I also want to say to you guys that not everybody has anxiety because you have a scare or you're worried. I have to really dive into this one because a lot of people have conversations about mental health now and it really has become almost like a fad for some. So I want to talk about how we as a community have to really stress, you know, what mental health is and we have to really be educated in it. If we're going to be talking about it, we have to actually talk about facts about what's really going on internally in all of us. And You guys know that when I talk about different diagnoses, I have to go to the DSM-5, our Holy Grail Bible for the United States for diagnosis. I have to tell you guys these definitions so we don't get it twisted. So you know what the criteria is for when you feel like you're experiencing anxiety. And this is not to be used for you to self-diagnose or to diagnose other people around you. So when we talk about anxiety, we talk about excessive anxiety worry we talk about different things that people experience so what the dsm says so for the first part it says excessive anxiety and worry occurring more days than not for at least six months about a number of events or activities such as work or school performance and it jumps to b it says the individual finds it difficult to control the worry see that keyword difficult to control the worry And C, the anxiety and worry are associated with three or more of the six symptoms with at least some symptoms have been present for more days than not for the past six months. So we do have a timeline of how long that anxiety has been going on. So it has to be in the timeline of six months. So it can be going on for Uh, I experienced anxiety two years ago. I think I have anxiety. So if you haven't had those symptoms within the last six months, we have to look at other diagnoses, okay? So some of the symptoms for anxiety are restlessness, feeling keyed up or on edge. So when you feel um, restless, like you can't sit around, it's affecting how you work or how you're performing at school or work being easily fatigued so when you're really tired you don't feel like doing anything else you're at work uh you're nodding off at school you're not really paying attention to what your professor is saying okay and then number three difficulty concentrating or a mind going blank so your mind is going blank like somebody's really talking to you and then They're like, did you hear what I just said? And then you're like, oh, what did you just say? It's almost, I like to call this one spacing out because I I space out sometimes when somebody's having a full-blown conversation or when they white noise in the background, I just face off. So that could be one of the symptoms. And then irritability. So when you're easily irritated, um, everything that someone does or things that people do around you, it irritates you as an individual. You know, every single thing. Number five is muscle tension. So your muscles are tense. You're not really comfortable. It's affecting how you're sleeping or how you're laying down. Or you're just feeling like your muscles are tense. You'll know it. It's a feeling that can't really be described unless you know what you're going through. And then sleep disturbance. 
So this is really important, like difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep or restlessness or unsatisfying sleep. So sleep disturbance is really in a lot of diagnoses. A lot of people experience this because anxiety does have a way of keeping you up at night. Because when you're excessively worried about things that are beyond your control or things that have happened to you in the past that or you would anticipate those things are going to happen to you, you are going to have sleep disturbance. It's inevitable to happen, you know, and it's really important that we have really good sleep hygiene. And if your sleep hygiene is off, then there's something going on there. So there's six different symptoms that somebody experiences. You at least have to have the three in order for you to have generalized anxiety disorder. So when it drops down to D, this one is really complex. I really have to you know, dive in and read it to you guys because it's really important because anxiety is not just, oh, I'm worried. That's it. You know, it's really deep. And, you know, as a lot of people think that, you know, being diagnosed with anxiety or depression is really easy. It's not. So we have to really be careful on what we say. And the anxiety, worry, or physical symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. It rocks your world. You're at work. You're shaking. You're tired. You're restless. You're pacing around. You haven't had really good sleep. Your boss is asking you what's going on with you. Are you okay? You can't cause your palms are sweating. You're not feeling like yourself. So we really have to dive into these things. And the disturbance is not attributed to physiological effects, like if you're using substances or you're on medications or hypothyroidism, like that's another medical condition that could cause you to have these things. So if you just started new medications or if there's been a change in your uh, physical health, then these uh, criteria obviously may fall in line with that. If that's already been ruled out, then obviously this may mean mean that you may have you know anxiety so we also have to rule out all other you know mental health issues that happen like depression PTSD anorexia somatic symptom disorders there are a lot of things that have to be ruled out first in order for us to get to anxiety. This is what I mean that it's more complex than what it is okay and if you have like panic attacks um, those are not attributed to anxiety. That's something totally different. That's panic, um, a panic disorder that also has a separate criteria. You see what I'm saying, folks? So we don't need to say we have anxiety when we don't know. It's really difficult to say. So once we talk about anxiety and it's really a feeling that we feel inside and we have to meet certain criteria, and we know that we've been experiencing anxiety for the past six months. Now what? How do we move forward knowing that we're anxious or not feeling like ourselves or we haven't really been uh, paying attention to what is causing our anxiety? Okay. So like I always recommend, the first thing is talk therapy. Um, talk therapy really helps individuals dive deep and think about what's really causing these feelings of anxiety and what are these symptoms coming from and what are they caused by. So one of the best, best, best modalities that could be used for people who have GAD is CBT. So CBT is a type of therapy. It's a cognitive behavioral therapy. So CBT basically focuses on somebody's thought process and how it leads them to that particular anxiety. Like what is the cause? And with CBT, it works in two components. So one of them is pretty much saying how do negative thoughts contribute to the anxiety? So your thought process. So sometimes, um, you know, we have trauma that we have experienced in our lives. So that may lead us to anxiety or anticipation of what may happen to us because of the trauma that we experienced prior to, right? Or things that we're anxious about that we've never experienced before, like, um, Okay, so I'm going to take a jog around the block, but I don't want to be abducted. 
But then you think, okay, have you ever been in a situation where you were abducted? Like, what is your neighborhood like? Um, what is the best time for you to take that jog? And why do you feel anxious about going on a jog? Is it something that your family member has experienced or is it something that you've seen or something that you've heard about on social media? So that has caused the worry. So thoughts like that. So where does the thought come from? And then when we move on to the second component, so what CBT does, it examines how you behave or react in situations that trigger your anxiety. So when you're in a situation when um, you're taking that jog, right? You're, you're, You're jogging around your block and then you see a white van just driving by, going wherever it's going. Now, You're excessively worrying, your muscles are tense, Um, you're having difficulty breathing, you're restless, you're scared, right? So this is not a real scenario, but I'm just saying, that could be all the thoughts that are going through your head at the time. So now what CBT does is like, okay, so how are you reacting in those situations and some scenarios of what I just described right before So CBT really dives in and, you know, it tries to change your thought process and it digs deep into why you think the way that you think and what has caused for you to have those symptoms of anxiety. So a lot of people, you know, don't know where it comes from. That's why I always recommend talk therapy, because sometimes having somebody on the outside tell you What could possibly be the root cause that helps you to get to that destination? So what happens is like in in, in talk therapy, you have these conversations with your therapist and you guys talk about the many different things that have led up to your anxiety or your whole life, really. And, you know, sometimes we get to the point where we have repressed some of the things that we've been through or um, we have taken on somebody else's thought process and made it our own. So having somebody that is a total stranger talk to you about those things and then they're able to help you peel back those layers and it kind of helps you get to your destination to get to your healing, right? So it really it peels back those layers of your thought process. And, you know, for anxiety, it really helps you to get to the root cause of the problem. Another alternative would be medications. So with medications, um, oh my goodness, with medications, it treats these symptoms. So medications are really good when you have therapy combined. So now it's just like giving somebody that has anxiety medications and then they take these medications, but they still don't know what the problem is, what the cause is. It really defeats their entire problem the entire process so if you've gone through talk therapy and you know why you're anxious and then you're on medications and you're talking to your psychiatrist and you have you know check-ins and you have your appointments that's really good because now you're at a point where you're you're managed and if any other symptoms come up you're able to have somebody to discuss to discuss those issues with So it's super important to combine medications with talk therapy initially to uncover all the things that really you have been going through. Another alternative is a holistic approach. I know some people don't always like to tell people their problems. I'm always an advocate. Talk to somebody. Okay, if you think you need therapy, you probably need therapy. So because there's always something to be worked on. We're not perfect beings. You know, no matter how perfect our lives may seem, there's always something to uncover and to elevate on. Um, With the holistic approach, there are some, you know, activities that you can do, such as yoga. Yoga is really good because of the breathing. Um, It gives you time to meditate in that time. And you can also incorporate a separate meditation that doesn't include yoga. Um, Mindfulness exercising, mindfulness breathing. And thinking about creating a routine for yourself because a lot of times with anxiety, if you do not have a routine, oh yeah, that's going to cause a lot of stress, a lot of stress. So once you're stressed out, 
it triggers your anxiety. So it creates a cycle. And then when you think about, you know, anxiety, you should look at it from a realistic approach if you're trying to go through the holistic method. So what really happens is when you're having these excessive worries or thoughts, you have to be able to be mindful, take that time to meditate and think about, do those anxious thoughts really mean something to me? Are they realistic or are they something that I'm just making up for the moment or I feel like it's something that may potentially affect me that has not happened yet that I'm worrying about, but you know, this situation doesn't affect me or won't affect me. It really um, helps you get to the realistic part of things. That's why I always start back to therapy because once you go through therapy and then you go down to the holistic approach, then it really helps you to be able to decipher what's realistic and what's not. And, you know, there are therapists out there who do use the holistic approach, which will allow you to learn different ways to use these methods. And, you know, and there are therapists out there who do yoga therapy. That is so awesome. So with therapy, it doesn't have to be a certain way. There are therapists out there who are creative, who practice mindfulness. Um, There's therapy where you talk for a certain amount of time. The rest is yoga. The rest is meditation, um, mindfulness exercises. So that's why it's always important to choose a therapist that's going to understand you or someone that you feel like you can relate with. So always choose somebody that's going to be there for you through your unique situation. And remember, if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, you need to seek help from a professional. And if I can help you in any way to uncover it, to figure out if you have anxiety, I'm more than happy. But it does not substitute you looking for help, you know, because I'm just a short-term information giver, you know. So when it comes to that, you really have to Seek someone who is in the area or somebody that gives teletherapy because anxiety is a journey and it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. So I appreciate you guys listening to this podcast and let me know if you have any questions and let me know if this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. You can catch us on Anchor and all your favorite media streams. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Silent Symptoms Podcast. Let us know if you have any feedback or topics that you would like to hear. 